right now. For in the midst of chaos, God, you are our calm. Now, Father, I thank you right now that I yield myself into your very capable hands. As wisdom flows freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. Father, I pray that you speak through my vocal cords and you think through my mind. None of me in all of you. I decrease so that the word of God may increase into the ears of these, your precious people. And I pray over every ear right now. I declare it's anointed to hear the word of God. And every heart right now, it's anointed to receive the word of God. Now, Father, I thank you for our children in our homes that's, that's partaking in the children's service. I declare their ears and their eyes are wide open to your voice, God. Speak to them, Lord. And, Father, I thank you for every preacher right now, every church right now, every pastor standing up and delivering the word of God to his flock. Father, I just declare that he has or she has or they have divine utterance for their people. Father, we lean on you. We worship you. Father, we acknowledge you in all of our ways, God. And Father, you have a word for us this morning. Lead us and guide us and direct us in the way that we should go. For man's goings are of the Lord, and we lean on that word. We give you all the honor, God. Oh, we give you all the glory. And we give you all of the praise. And it's in Jesus' name. And everybody at the sound of my voice said, Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you may be seated on your recliner or wherever you're sitting at your kitchen table, in your home theater, on your patio, wherever you are. Let's get into this word. And um, I'm excited. As you know, we're all online right now uh, due to the, uh, some of the restrictions we have here in, in the city of Jacksonville. We're, we're having church online virtually. And we also have it for your children. So make sure your children are plugged in to their Excel Kids lessons. It's important during this time that I speak on what I'm going to speak on this morning. And I'm going to speak on something that's, that, that the Lord uh, cautioned me on this week as I was meditating in, meditating in the Word, uh, just being before God, so on and so forth. He cautioned me on something. And I want to share that with you this morning because I feel like it's a word for us. And for a title this morning, for a title this morning, the title is... Prayer in the midst of reality. Did you get that? Prayer or the importance of prayer in the midst of reality. Right now, it's not if the virus is here. It's not if uh, the virus is deadly. It's not if the virus can spread. It's, it's, it's not if uh, 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 it, it, it can exert itself uh, on the human population. There's no more ifs. It's a reality. But we have to have prayer in the midst of reality. And I want to talk about this morning to kind of stir you up and point you to God and point you to prayer because, you know, contrary to popular belief, listen, you can't fight this kind of fear with a gun. You can't arrest the coronavirus. You can't shoot it. You can't put the military on it. You can't. But I tell you what we can do as believers on behalf of this world and this country, we can push back against this, against this pandemic with prayer. Prayer is powerful. We control the airways when we pray. We control it. We go to our Father and we, we bind things. We loose things. We speak to the mountain. And it's important that we have prayer in the midst of reality. Now, that title brings me to this. You don't want to act like it's not happening. As a believer, that's not walking by faith. You know, you have to know your enemy. You have to know your enemy and what's happening. And if you are being bombarded by fear, losing friends, friends getting sick, loved ones passing away. We've had, we've had people that we're close to. And just this week, a total of five people passed away from this thing, it's time for the church to get serious, not about shouting. Our most powerful weapon is prayer. Jesus said in John 15, he talked about abiding in the true vine. He said, I abide in you and you will abide in me. Us abiding in him is prayer. 
Prayer is the chief discipline of a believer abiding in Christ. So I want to encourage you this morning to go to God in prayer. Amen. Let's go to 2 Kings uh, chapter 2 real quick here. Let's turn to 2 Kings chapter 2. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo, you're so good to us, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 2 Kings chapter 9. You know, this text right here is going to show us something uh, that I want to pull out of it to encourage the believer this morning. To encourage the believer this morning. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, <clears throat> you know, prayer is just like it's just like the radio waves or the sound waves or concurrent waves. It's it's you can't see what it's doing. Right now, I'm speaking through this microphone, and I'm like, how is this even happening? It's through waves. It's through concurrent waves. You know, I hear things. I hear buzzing in this speaker right now. But guess what? I don't know where it's coming from, but, but prayer is like that. Prayer says, listen, I'm going to pray to my Father like Jesus told us in Matthew 6. That is in heaven. And what am I, what am I going to pray? That his kingdom comes comes to earth, and we are pushing back by bringing down healings, uh, 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 death prevention, all of that from heaven, not through talking, not through ignoring, not through just natural confessions. We're bringing those things down from heaven, according to Matthew 6. We're bringing them down through prayer, and that's what we want to talk about. Now, before we read this text, I want to give you this line. As believers, we must walk in a higher spiritual reality. During this time, we have to walk in a higher spiritual reality. Why? Because there is one. There is one for the believer. There is a higher spiritual reality. The word says we are from above and we're not beneath. We're from above and we're not beneath which simply means we tap into something higher. We don't ignore sickness. We just tap into something higher. We don't ignore facts or truth. We just tap into something higher. And the Bible tells us, listen, walk by faith and not by sight. Walk by the faith of God, what he's already done in your life, the prayers he's already answered. It says walk by faith in that and don't walk by what you see and what you hear. Your senses will be dominated by the media if you walk by that. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So 2 Kings, let's start at, uh, let's see here. Glory to God. Uh, I tell you, you know, during this time, boy, if if you're not spending time in the word of God and really just spending time with God, it's it's the best time to spend time with God. Amen. What did I say? 2 Kings, let's go to 2 Kings chapter 2. I'm sorry. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse Verse 9. Turn to your Bibles in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9. Now, there's a war going on here, and uh, the, 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 the king of Syria is in war, and, and, and Elijah the prophet is, is, is kind of relaying messages, and the king of Syria is kind of trying to figure out, how in the world does this king over here, my opponent, know my every move before I even make it? Verse 9. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9. And it came to pass when they were going over that Elijah said to Elisha, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elijah said, pray thee, let a double portion of of, of your spirit be upon me. And he said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. Verse 11. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and departed from them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind. Now, <clears throat> Elisha and Elijah, th- th- Elijah the prophet, he's going to go into heaven. Elisha is a servant. But what I want to pull out right here is this. Elisha <clears throat> was told to ask. Ask what it is, and we're talking Old Testament, ask what it is of me that you want, and it will be given unto you. And Elisha said, I want the double portion on my life. And the prophet, 
his, his, his leader said, man, you've asked a hard thing. Now, how many people know God doesn't say that? God says, ask, seek, and knock. God says, ask, seek, and knock. God says, ask, seek, and knock. And we're coming to God in prayer, and we're asking, seeking, and knocking, not, think, not, not, not wondering if God is going to answer our prayers. Why? Because God has already answered our prayers. Now, let me drop this thought in you and just hold your place right there. <clears throat> oh, gosh. Prayer is not a matter of asking only. Prayer is not a matter of asking only. Prayer is a matter of asking knowing that you already have it. Glory to God. It's a matter of asking and knowing that you already have it. I want you to repeat that after me. Prayer is a matter of me asking and knowing that I already have it. So when you ask God for protection during this time, you ask God for preservation during this time, you ask God to stretch your gas, stretch your finances. When you ask God that, it's a prayer of knowing that you already have it. It's a matter of knowing that you already have it. It's not asking and wondering if God is going to answer me on this. No, God has already given it to you. Amen. He's given you health, protection. And we said last week, every disease, every calamity, it dies at the, instant, at, at, at the point of contact. Why is that so important? Because when I'm praying, I'm praying with confidence and I'm not I'm not wondering if God is going to reciprocate his promises. I'm not wondering if God is going to answer his promises. I already know when I'm asking, the Bible says, give thanks when you pray to God. Well, why would I give thanks? Thank him for what he's already done while you're praying. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, I want to pull that out of that, and I want to turn to Luke 18 right now. Luke 18 right now. Luke 18. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to come back to 2 Kings Media. I'm going to come back to 2 Kings, and we're going to, we're going to go back three books in chapter 6 there. I'll have that ready for me, 2 Kings chapter 6. But I want to go to Luke 18 right now so we can stir ourselves up. And listen, prayer is the chief discipline right now. Again, you, you can't pull up on the virus and say, stop, or I'll shoot you. You can't, you can't do it. We can't, we, can't, we can't put the military on them. We can't, we, we, we can't do that. What can we do? We pray in the midst of reality. That is here and that and, and, and that is exerting itself on the human population. So Luke eight. Thank you, Lord. Luke eight. No, I'm sorry. Luke 18. Luke 18. Thank you, Lord. Watch this very powerful parable here. And he he who Jesus Luke 18 spake a parable unto them to this end that men men say that in your living room right there say that in your car right there that men ought not men ought to pray always pray and men should not faint that word faint simply means don't give up cave in and quit in hard times don't give up cave in and quit my job laid me off don't give up cave in and quit With my loved one, I had a friend who, don't give up, cave in, and quit. Listen, we pray when it's going great. We pray when it's going bad. We pray when the baby is born. We pray when the home going is happening. Men ought to always pray and don't faint. Now, there's times when life can exert itself on you. And right now, this pandemic is exerting itself on those, watch this now, who have no hope. But as a believer... You have hope. You have a covenant with God, and we can push back against this thing through prayer. Why? Because we have a hope in God. We have a covenant in God that, listen, he hears our prayers, and he answers those prayers before we even say it. The Bible says God knows what you need before you even ask him. And right now, we need God to go ahead and resolve this thing. We need to be sending our angels forth, praying for those in charge, praying for leaders, the last thing this country needs is for the key leaders, the key leaders to get infected. That's the last thing we need right now. 
This thing is serious. We should be praying for them every single day. Praying for them every single day. Because Satan would love nothing more than to create and wreak havoc amongst those who are making viable decisions to push back against this thing. He would love nothing more to begin to attack their bodies. We must pray for them. We cannot afford to be a, 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 a people that, 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 that doesn't have key leaders uh, 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 forging forth on this thing. He said, Christmas, no, Johnny, we're going to wait till Christmas. No, Billy, we're not going to do that. No, Sally, we're not going to do that. You can talk like that on December 23rd by December 24th because they persistently kept coming and asking and troubling you. You know what you're going to say? I'll tell you what, family, we're going to go ahead and open one each. Why in the world would you switch from Hey, we don't open presents on December 23rd. We open presents on December 25th. Why would you switch your narrative? I'll tell you why. Because little Johnny, that little anchor biters, the little kids running around, they were persistent in their request. And when it comes to prayer, we need to be persistent going before the Lord. Men ought to always pray. We pray without ceasing. And God needs to be saying, my God, whoo, Lord, have mercy. These, he, needs, he needs to be saying, my children are on my coattail 24-7. And then all of a sudden, wisdom begins to be disseminated into the scientists, into the doctors, into the, 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 the decision makers. And people will go, how in the world did we not see that at first? Listen, prayer will open their eyes to see things that's always been there, but they've just never seen it with their natural eyes. But if we stay persistent as believers, we can push back, not just against the fear that's on this country, but the fear that is trying to exert itself on us. Thank you, Lord. Let's keep reading this. He says, he says, yes, he troubles me. He says, I will avenge her. Lest by her continually coming she wearies me. She wears me out with her request. And I'm telling you, we should be before the Lord at night. We should be before the Lord if we're working outside. We, we should be before the Lord before we go to sleep. We should be before the Lord when a loved one pops on our mind. We should go before the Lord when our church pops on our mind. We should go before the Lord when grandma, grandpa, mama, daddy, somebody back home, a cousin, relative, uncle, aunt. We should be before the Lord at all times. Why? Let me tell you something. Without prayer, there is no hope. Without prayer, there is no hope. Let's keep going here. And verse 6, and the Lord said, hear what this unjust man says. Jesus says, hear what this man says, the one who said, I have, I, he, he said up here, he says, I have no fear for God. I have no regard for humanity. But this persistence of this lady broke that sternness broke that stiff neckness, and Jesus was telling them, now hear what this unjust judge says. And shall not God avenge his own, own elect? His own elect is, is us, which cry or pray day and night unto him. See, prayer is not things will get better. Prayer is not this thing is going to turn around. Prayer is not, prayer is not, uh, sooner or later, somebody's going to figure something out. No, that, that's not prayer. That's just talk. You got to go before your father and say, Lord, I know you are Lord of all. And Father, I know that you are Adonai, my Lord and master. And father, I thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who provides for me. Therefore, I don't fear the layoffs. I don't fear the, the, the leave of absence. I don't fear, I don't fear what the company's going to do because God, you are my source. You are my provider. You, that's, that's going to God praying. But, 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 but saying out of your mouth that my industry is, is, is recession proof. That's not prayer. We know that's not even true. You, you're just talking words. You should be praying. Listen, exemption minded is the most dangerous thing any believer, non-believer can have right now. What do I mean? That, 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 th that the consequences of a fallen country right now cannot come to your doorstep. That's prideful. That's, 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 that's arrogant. That's, that's, that is, that is hubristic, excessively confident, 
and arrogant. That is prideful. You should be praying, bending the knee, saying, Lord, I don't know how to. I, 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 there is no other way but you. There is no other provision but you. There is no other protection but you. There is no other leading or guiding but you, God. That is prayer. So let's keep going here. Thank you, Lord. Woo, glory to God. So shall not God avenge his own elect, verse 7, which cried day and night unto him, through though he bear along with him, I tell you that he will avenge them, watch this, speedingly. Speedingly. God's prayer, his, his answer prayer is not delayed. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not being answered. Because, see, you can be praying for leadership and for your government and for, for your government, for your mayor, for your president, for whoever, whoever you put the welfare of your hands into. And guess what? You can with prayer. The Bible says the Bible says Lord, the Lord has the king's uh, uh, heart in his hand. He can turn it any way he wants to go. You can be praying and walk away and you don't see anything till Friday. And all of a sudden, the, 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 the decision maker goes, we're going to do this right here. Da, 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 da. And the intercessors look around and go, that's the exact thing we was praying for. Listen, I want to say this to intercessors. You are not a small fry in this world. You've always been a big fry. You are a big fry right now. You continue to push back against this thing. Why? Because we need you now more than any time. We need intercessors knowing, listen, when we pray, God answers our prayers. When we pray, darkness returns to life. When we pray, death goes to life. When we pray, we push back against whatever the devil is trying to exert on this world. So Jesus says, I tell you that he will revenge you them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, Shall he find faith on earth? Faith like what? Faith like this lady who was persistent in going to the decision maker, going to the judge. She was persistent to the point where she wearied him. Why? I have to believe that this lady, whatever situation she was in, there was no hope for her. And she knew my only hope now is not my attorney. Not how much money I have in the bank, not the last name of my family, not the industry I work in. My only hope is going to this natural judge who is in charge. And I'm not just going to go to him some kind of little feeble, obscure. No, I'm not going to go like that. I'm going to I'm going to go with persistence and I'm going to trouble him. I'm going to make him weary. And we should we should be going to God in, in prayer with persistence, persistence daily and 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 believing that we receive because that's all we have right now the economy has failed us and i want to caution anybody who's more excited who's more excited about taking advantage of the economy while it's down than praying preservation over their physical life their physical life I see more people that's more excited about uh, more excited about buying while everything is low. And I'm saying to myself, you can buy now all you want to. But do you know if if this thing keeps pushing against this country in 12 weeks, we will see something in this country like we've never seen before. Those who didn't believe in God, they will have no choice but to come to God. It will wreak havoc on this country if this thing continues to exert itself on human population. So the last thing I'm thinking about is exerting all of my energy on buying low while everything is bad and becoming rich when everything goes back up. Guess what? There may not even be that. If there's no economy, this thing is serious. And don't let the economy be your God. Don't let the comeback of the economy be your God. Don't let the history of we've been in recession and here's what happened. Don't let that be your God. This thing is serious. This thing has brought our country to its knees and the believer, the prayer warriors, those who have a covenant, those who are joint heirs with Christ, the only weapon we have is prayer, is prayer, is prayer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, let's go back. Let's go back to 2 Kings chapter 6 real quick. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So Elisha asked, and Elijah said, man, you've asked a hard thing here. My God. But nevertheless, people in power, people, people, listen, asking, not asking to me is saying, I have another source I'm depending on. 
Not going to God and asking and saying, I have another belief system that I'm, that I'm leaning on. That's the, 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 not asking. At this time, we should be asking our Lord for direction, asking our Lord uh, for protection, asking our Lord to speak through us as we talk to our children, asking our Lord, how do I comfort my wife? How do I comfort my grandparents? Asking our Lord, how do I comfort my mom who's in a senior living facility? But don't be arrogant and go with your own understanding during this time. Second Kings 6. Thank you, Lord. Second Kings 6. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> and the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware uh, you, 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 that you have passed not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. There's a war happening. And the king of Israel <clears throat> sent to the place which, man, which the man of God told him and warned of and saved himself there. Not once nor twice. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria, these two kings are at war here. The heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and he said unto them, will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? So in other words, he called everybody who's under his command and said, which one of you guys are going back telling this guy everything that we're doing? And one of his servants said, none of us. None of us, my Lord. O king, but Elijah, the prophet that is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in thy bedchamber. <laughs> the prophet is in your bedchamber telling the other king, your opponent, what you speak. And he said, go and spy where he is. Go find him, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he to the horses and chairs and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, this is what I want you to see. This is what I want you to see when you begin to pray. I want you to see this story when you begin to look at the, when you see what's happening in the news, when you, when you see what's happening uh, in New York, when you see that hospitals are over flooding, you got to go to a higher reality. And the servant of man of God risen early and gone forth, and behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. So now his opponents has surrounded the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, his servant said unto him, listen, I don't walk in fear as a believer. I don't walk in fear as a pastor. But I can tell when my kids and my wife comes to me and say, I can, I can see the only hope we have is God. I can hear it in their voices. And this, and this servant is getting honest with himself. This servant is getting honest about the reality of what is. And he, asked, he, said, he said, we're surrounded, man. And the servant said unto him, alas, my master, how shall we do? What are we going to do? And he answered and said, fear not. And I tell you to fear not. Fear not. For they that be with us, they that be with us, I want you to repeat that after me in your home. They that be with us, glory to God, are more than they that be with them. Your angels have been given charge over your life. And when you leave the house to get some necessities, I want you to know they that are with you are more than they that are with this pandemic. Your angels are leading your way. Your angels are telling you to turn left here. Your angels are slowing the traffic down. Your angels are closing stores early that you would have went to. Your angels are greater than what you see. You got to know that. And you got to believe that. <clears throat> Watch this now. And Elijah said, Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. What do you mean see? The young servant just told you what he's seen. He's not talking about his natural eyes. He's talking about a higher spiritual reality. He's saying, open your spiritual eyes now. Open his spiritual eyes so he can see God. And I say, God, open our eyes and we can see a brighter tomorrow. 
We can see our kids back in school. We can see ourselves back in our offices working. Open our eyes and let us know it's going to be okay. We can see ourselves. We can see our daughters. You say, you say man, I'm a, I'm a grandfather. I'm a grandmother. I don't know if I'm going to see my grandbaby. I don't know if I'm going to see my grandbaby do this, do that. I'm telling you, the Lord told me to tell you, open your eyes and see her walking down that aisle. Open your spiritual eyes. There's a higher spiritual reality than this pandemic, but we must open our eyes. Thank you, Lord. He says, he, Elijah prayed and said, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord, remember, it's already done. The Lord opened the eyes of the young man. Watch this. And he saw. And he saw. If you can follow this story and really get your spiritual eyes open and lift your spiritual reality, I promise you the last thing you'll be thinking about is taking advantage of downtimes. You're going to say, Lord, I need spiritual eyes. I need to see. I don't need to be deceived by what I think I know. I don't need to be deceived by thinking I'm going to get rich. I don't need to be deceived by thinking this is the time to buy this and buy. I don't need to be deceived by that. I need my spiritual eyes opened to life and death. I need to know where to go, what to do, what to eat, how to do it. Open my eyes. I want to live like that. And you want to live like that. He says, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots. Verse 17, chariots of fire round and about Elisha. I want you to know that angels are surrounding your cars. Angels are surrounding your children. Angels are surrounding your provision. Angels are surrounding your investments. Angels are surrounding them. Listen, we walk, we walk and live in a higher spiritual reality. And, 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 and as a believer, you got to do that through prayer. Pray in the midst of of reality. It was a reality for this young man. The reality for him was he was scared. He was fearful. And a lot of people are saying fear not, but they haven't even went through the process of fearing. Listen, I went through the process of fearing as a pastor, as a believer. Absolutely. I was trying to figure out how's this thing. Wait a minute. Another one died. Wait a minute. This country's quarantined. Hold on. We don't have a vaccine for this thing. And the, there's a fearing, but I cast those thoughts down. But I went through the process. And I didn't just jump to the economy. I just, just didn't jump to now's the time to buy. I just didn't jump to that. I, 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 I really got into reality, and I began to learn my enemy and know my enemy. Now I know how to fight him. Now I don't meditate with my eyes and ears on the media. Now I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't trend fear through text and emails faster than I trend faith. I tell people, believe God. God's going to bring us out of this. I send guys encouraging texts. Hey, pray over your family tonight. Make sure you pray. Pray, 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 pray over your family now. Lead your family in prayer now. What am I doing? I, I, I went through fearing, but I'm on the other side of it now. A lot of people ignored going through it, and the other side for them is they're looking at the market. And I'm saying to myself, you have no idea what we're up against. No idea. I want to give you this thought. <clears throat> Don't fear, don't fear the reality of where we are in this pandemic. Don't fear it. Don't fear the reality of where we are in this pandemic. We're there. What do I do? You pray. What do I do? You press in with prayer. But don't you fear it. You respect it. Number two, don't ignore the reality of where we are in this pandemic. Don't ignore it. The reality of where we are is people are dying and we have no vaccine and this thing has no face and you can't call JSO on these people. You can't call the troopers on these, on, on, I'm sorry, on this pandemic. You can't call the FBI. On. You can't call the CIA. You can't call the military. N none of those guys can deal with this. The reality of where we are. We can't ignore it. But I tell you what we can do. Once you realize the reality of where we are and you realize prayer is the only hope, you will up your prayer game. You will go to your father, which is in heaven. And you'll bring protection and preservation down from heaven to earth. Number three, don't be. <laughs> Listen to this. I know it's a long word. Hubristic. 
What is that? Excessively confident and arrogant in your natural means or ability to stay healthy. Listen, wash your hands. <laughs> you want to wear that mask? Wear that mask. I heard a guy last night, a doctor, he was on. He said, listen, he said, I've been dealing with this thing. He broke down in tears. He said, 18 hours a day, I'm dealing with it. Da, 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 da. I'm studying it. I got scientists around me. He said, and he said, he said, hear me on this. I'm going to make it real simple for you. Wash your hands and never touch your face with your hands. He says, just don't do it. He said, this thing is not transmitted shoulder to shoulder. He said, aerosolly, you got to be in a, in a contained space. He said, but if you want to hedge against this virus, wash your hands constantly and never touch your face. Never touch your nose. Never touch your eyes. Never touch your ears. Never touch your mouth with your hands. So I said, okay, now my hands are clean. I can touch my face. And the Holy Spirit said, no, retrain yourself. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face, Derek. <laughs> wash your hands. Don't touch your face, Derek. Don't touch your nose. Don't touch your eye. Do not do it. He said it is transmitted that way, and, and, and it can be aerosol. It can be aerosol, aerosolly transmitted. But this doctor said, listen. And, 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 and I, the Holy Spirit said, listen to this man. He's making it simple. I said, oh, wow. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm going in places, uh, take, taking off in a 50-yard dash when, when, when somebody is next to me. And it's like, okay, are they sneezing? Are they coughing? Are they, are they spewing out aerosol? No, they're not. It's okay, you can stay six feet away. You stay six feet away. But know this, uh, uh, if you're just standing six feet and they're at six feet, or you're standing four feet and they're at four feet, you're not going to, if they're not coughing, if they're not spewing stuff into the air, you're not going to just, you're not just going to get it because you, you're right there near them. You, you, it's transmitted this way. And we got to know our enemy. Otherwise, we're in fear. I got, I got kind of offended in a, in a, in a big, big box store there. I was buying some stuff for the home. And I was walking down, had my little gloves on, and walking down the aisle. And, 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 and man, a guy seen me coming, and he just, he just jumped out of the way. I said, man, I ain't coughing. I ain't sneezing. I ain't doing none of that stuff. I'm not contagious. I got kind of offended. But he was uninformed. Just uninformed. That, 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 that's all it was. So, man, I'm not nasty. Shoot. <laughs> Don't be hubristic in your natural means or ability to stay healthy. That's number three. Number, the fourth thought is the greatest test to our foundation of life is fear. Fear reveals to us what we stand on as believers. Fear, this kind of fear, is revealing to people, okay, what is your pivot foot? What is your belief system? What are you standing on? Well, I'm keeping up with the news. Uh-uh. Oh, I, you better be keeping up with prayer because this thing is revealing your belief system. What are you standing on? And ignoring it is not standing on it. Being hubristic about it, arrogant about it is not standing on it. What are you standing on? Because fear, real fear with an enemy that, 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 that can't be grabbed and, and arrested, real fear, it reveals your foundation of beliefs. That's what real fear does. Fear, the next thought is, fear forces man to define his foundation of beliefs. Fear forces man to define his foundation of beliefs. For some men and women, it's, uh, it's the economy. It's, it's buy low and they're going to be rich after that. Oh, your fear is defined. That, that, that's your foundation. For, for some men, they're very hubristic. They're very arrogant. This will never happen to me, so I'll just ignore it. I ain't got to pray. I ain't got to do that. My job will never do this. My job will never do that. Oh, so you're not praying for preservation? You're not praying to your, to, to your God who's your source? Your job is your resource? All of your confidence is in your job in the industry that it'll never go away? Don't do that. Jesus called that the deceitful of riches, deceitfulness of riches. And he also said, listen, here's what riches do. They trick you. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, I think it is, verse 5, they, they grow wings and fly away, and we've seen that. Please don't put your foundation in that. Please don't put your foundation in your job. You put your hope and your trust in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that guess what? He is answering my prayers before I even ask them. Pray without ceasing, I say. The next thought. 
the reality of what is should push us as believers into a higher reality of prayer and faith. The reality of what's happening in this country now shouldn't push us back from what we believe. It should push us higher into a reality of prayer and faith. Why do I keep saying that? Because as your pastor, I've realized that I need prayer (laughs) in the midst of reality. I don't need no more information. I don't need to see the Dow go up, down, sideways, east, west, north, south. It is turbulent. You can't trust it. You can think you're getting over now, and you're going to make a colossal mistake if you are putting all of your trust into that thing. So so, so, so I just, I, I lift into a higher spiritual reality in the midst of a physical reality. And what is that? I'm walking my faith and not by sight, and I'm praying to my Lord daily, lead me, guide me. Father, I thank you for peace today. Lord, I thank you for direction today. Lord, my countenance is not in Wall Street. It's not in the Dow Jones. You are my source, God. And Father, I thank you that you provide every daily bread that me and my family needs. Lord, I lean on you in this time. I don't lean on my investments. I don't lean on my savings account. I don't lean on nothing right now except your word, God. And I'm telling myself, Derek, you better stay in a higher reality, buddy, because every system that the world believes in has failed, has failed. It's good news for a believer to know that, man, I have a covenant with God where I can pray to him and he hears my prayers and he answers those before I even ask him. Man, that's a powerful place to be. So reality of what is should push us into a higher reality of prayer and faith. You know, <clears throat> as much as a man or a head of a household can think that just spewing things of confidence from his career, from the reserves they have, and thinking that somehow or another he's comforting his family and comforting his wife, he is falsely, uh, uh, he is giving them false confidence false foundations of, 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 to stand on. He needs to be in prayer and in faith. Not falling all over the place, not falling all over the place in fear, and not falling all over the place in hubristicness, excessive arrogance and confidence in the world system. He needs to be in prayer, or she needs to be in prayer and faith. Why? You know, I had this thought. People say, well, you know, the church, the church, the church don't move if people don't give. Let me tell you something. The world don't move if people don't buy. We're discovering that now. We're kind of discovering the very thing that you try to exert on the church because you thought that that kind of system had confidence. Let me promise you this. If people don't buy products, if people are not buying, if people are not working, if people are not ordering food, if people can't do that, guess what? Businesses fall. So you need people. To move this world. So come out of this knowing. Listen, you can say what you want to say about the church. Every industry needs people believing in it and releasing funds towards it for it to survive. Know that. Next thought. Prayer is a precise. I love this. A precise disposition. That demonstrates Total dependency on God. (laughs) Prayer is a precise disposition that demonstrates total dependency on God. This morning, this week, the Holy Spirit was waking me up earlier than he's ever done before. And I'm talking waking me up. I'm not talking about me stumbling through the house. I'm not talking about me wondering where I am. I'm not talking about me, you know, complaining to him. I'm talking, waking me up and uttering these words, get up and pray. So, Lord, I get up and pray. I pray this time. He said, get up now and pray. Get up now. I said, well, I guess I'll I'll get my my house cut on and my, my." no. He said, said, get you some shorts on, get a T-shirt, and uh, get some flip-flops because I'm going to take you outside. I said, my God, the Holy Spirit, man, man, come on. And he said, no, 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 he, he, he says, get up. He said, you, you, he said, you know prayer is the chief discipline to abide in me, right? I said, yes, sir. He said, I want to talk to you, like I said earlier, about having a prayer life in the midst of reality, Derek. 
He said, now I want to ask you a question. He said, I'm going to ask you an honest question here. It may be hard for you. He said, I see your life. I know you're a praying man. He said, I see everything about you. He said, I know that. He said, but I'm getting ready to ask you a hard question. And I was in my backyard, and it was not even, the, 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 the daylight had not even started yet. It was around 535, 45. And he said, I want to ask you a question. He said, I notice you've been, you, you, you've really upped your prayer. You've really upped your confessions here lately. I said, yes, sir, absolutely. That's all I got. He said, is reality of what is provoking you to pray, or is your love and belief in me provoking you to pray. I said, wait a minute, Lord, what are you saying? He said, I'm saying, have you come to the point of realizing there is no other hope in this reality but prayer, and that is driving you to me? I said, um, sir, when this first thing started, uh, I was being provoked. Uh, by, by reality, I was being provoked by something I didn't understand. It was unknown to me. And, and I can't honestly say to you, God, that that, that, that kind of pushed me towards you. And that wasn't right. I should have, when this thing came out, I should have been in prayer as my foundational belief system. But honestly, God, I, I, I got to be honest with you. I was reacting to fear. And I prayed a little harder. And I prayed a little longer. He said, he said, he said that is for the believer that's in and out of church. That's for the believer that prays for me when they want things to go well. And once they're going well, they don't come to me again. He says, so I want to know if reality is provoking you to prayer or your belief in me is provoking you to pray. He said, I'm asking you again. I said, Lord, my belief in your system in the midst of reality is provoking me to come to you and to pray. He say, well, good. I want you to know me that way, always know me that way, and never get in a position again where you're coming to me being provoked by reality. Don't do that. Don't do that. He says, I said, well, why don't do that? He said, most people hadn't talked to me in six months. Most people, when this thing started to, to, to hit this country, they didn't come to me in prayer. They just kind of thought it was going to blow over in five weeks. They thought the U.S. of A. was the strongest country on the planet. They thought that we had the smartest people on the planet. So this, they just kind of ignored the thing. But when reality hit them, they began to come to me. But when they thought that this system over here was going to save them, this system over here was going to figure it out, they didn't even pay any attention to me. He said, don't you dare do that again. I said, yes, sir. I said, can I go back in the house now? He said, uh, nope, still not here and pray. I said, well, good God, me and the birds are shepherding. I just go ahead and pray, but I learned a valuable lesson. I don't care when the smallest pandemic hits your life, the smallest trouble hits your life, don't you begin to grade or appraise it and say, hey, it's a level one now, so I'm going to kind of lean in my hubristicness, in my confidence, in my arrogance, my technology, my career, my industry is going to stay strong. We're going to survive this. It won't hit my house. It won't hit my family. It won't hit my church. It won't hit my business. So, so I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to lean in that. And you have a level one leaning in the beginning of a thing that's pushing against your confidence. But as that thing rises up, Level five now, level six now, level eight now. You should have a level 10 leaning the day you hear trouble coming into this country, into your life, into your job, into your finances, into your body, into your health. You need to have a level 10 leaning in prayer and not just think, ah, it won't happen to me. Ah, this thing will blow over. I mean, come on. Look at the economy. It's it's, going to come back. No, 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 no. Don't do that. You press into me day one says the Lord. Amen? (laughs) Glory to God. Hallelujah! Woo! (sighs) Listen to this. Mm. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. No fear. No anxiety. I speak to you. No fear. No anxiety, I speak to you. How in the world am I going to walk in no fear and no anxiety in this time in this country? You need to have a prayer life. You need to be praying in the midst of reality. It's here. It's doing what it does. You need to be binding this thing every single day over every person in this world. 
You need to be binding it up. You need to be pushing back in prayer because we need prayer in the midst of reality. No fear, no anxiety. Philippians 4. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Philippians 4, real quick. I tell you, this is just a good thing for you as a family to be sitting around the Word right now. And I know you may have a small one that's, that's crying and needs some, need some food and needs some milk, so on and so forth. But, you know, there are some little ones in this church that kind of hatched and came out of the oven about a year or two ago. And uh, I can walk up to them and I can just say one word to them. And, boy, they began to jump. I said, my God, they know my voice. And the, mama, the mom would say, you know why they know your voice? Because I was in church every single Sunday. <laughs> you know why they know your voice? Because I listened to replay and I was pregnant with them in my belly. And, boy, I can go up to them and start talking. And it's as if I've always known them. No fear. No anxiety. And you have a strong prayer life when you stay away from those things. And let me, let me say this to you. Those babies know my voice because they heard it often. My sheep, we have a, a knowing relationship. You need to open your mouth in prayer where it can go. Literally. Tell it where it can go. And it, can, it cannot come now your dwelling. But open your mouth and tell it. Philippians 4, uh, 6, real quick. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Be fearful. One translation says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer. You know, now. I want to ask you a question about that. If my wife walked into the family room and handed me this bottle of Perrier water and I said, thank you, I say thank you because I don't possess it. I do possess it when she hands it to me. I say thank you. That's not how God works. God says, be careful for nothing, be anxious for nothing. And what he, this, he's not, he's not, he's, this is not an optional statement here. This is not a question. He says, be careful for nothing or anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made or known Unto God. So you know what he's saying? He's saying you don't have to receive the water first or the thing I have for you first and say thank you. Why? Because I've already gave it to you. What? Because I've already answered your prayer. I've already given it to you. All I need you to do is with thanksgiving and supplication as you pray. Not when you get the Perrier in your hand. As you pray, just with prayer and supplication, you just, you, 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 you're, you're, you're thanking God for what he's already given you. And I came here to tell you this morning, he's already given you preservation in your finances. He's already given you health and wholeness. He's already given you supernatural wisdom on how to navigate these turbulent times. You don't have to wait on a prayer to be answered and say thank you. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait for your spouse to walk in with something that you want, hand it to you, and then say thank you. No, you thank God while you're praying because God has already given you the Perrier water. He's already given you the very thing that you're praying for while you're praying. You, 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 your prayer is full of thanksgiving. Why in the world am I thanking God before I see a thing? That's, see, that's a little reality. You're thanking God in your prayers because he's already given it to you. He said, I don't work like that. I don't hand you something. You say, thank you. <laughs> you pray with thanksgiving and supplication because you already have it. Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Mm, 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 mm. I, I can take off running right now, but ain't nobody in here but me, so I, 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 I don't want to do that. According to Luke 18, 1, <clears throat> according to Luke 18, 1, don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. Don't faint not. 
When you log off here today, don't turn on the news. But you already know your enemy. You already know what it can do. You already know what the Dow is going to do. You don't lose heart. Don't give up, cave in and quit. You lean into prayer. You let your foundation of beliefs be known to your family and friends. I'm standing on the word of God. Well, you realize they, I know my enemy, but I'm standing on the word of God. Well, did you see? I know what I saw, but I live in a high spiritual reality. I know what I see, but I'm standing on the word of God. Number two, the greatest test of foundations or pillars in our lives, the greatest test of foundation of pillars in our lives is when we have an unknown enemy. When you have an unknown enemy, you don't know what to do. You ever walked in the house and your husband is hiding in, in, in a room? And you're walking through with your plate of food or you're walking through with your drink. And he goes, ha! Ah! And you jump, everything flies all over the place. Why? It's your husband. But guess what? When he was hiding and you didn't know that, you were fearful. But if I told you, when you go home now, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, old Bill told me uh, that he's going to be hiding in the garage when you pull up. He's going to try to scare you. I just want you to know it's only Bill. It's your husband. You riding home. You laughing. <laughs> Oh, boy, this guy thinks he's going to scare me. Well, why are you laughing? Because you, have, you, you know your enemy. You know him. So you get out of the car. He can jump out, he can jump out and go, rah! It's like, boy, go sit down somewhere. Well, how can you even say that? Because you have foreknowledge of your enemy. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Do not postpone or put off your hope, according to Luke 18.1. Don't postpone or put off your hope. You begin to pray right now, right there in your living room. If you got to repent right now, you repent. So, Lord, I've been leaning on these systems. These things are failing us. They have failed me. I'm leaning on you. My foundation of beliefs is the word of God. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. I can't stand on what I used to know. This is something new. I got to have a prayer life right now, right here and today. You stand on your foundation of beliefs, foundation of beliefs from the word of God. Jesus is urging us according to 18.1. He's urging us. He was urging them to pray and don't grow weary. I want you to pray and you don't grow weary. Over your jobs, over this, over that, so and so. Oh, man, I'm going to go back to work in two weeks. Oh, I'm going to go back. And you know what? You start leaning on that kind of stuff. Oh, I'm going to work from home forever. Oh, my God. Oh, you know, and, 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 and you're doing that. But what you don't realize is your corporation has a strategic team in place to see what can we do without and what do we need. We finally, we're finally slowing down to see how we can move this operation forward and what can we do without and what do we need. So don't rejoice that you're working from home and put all of your confidence in one day they're going to do this. Let me tell you something. They just may be figuring out how to phase things out and you don't want your confidence in that because they are realizing right now what it takes to run their operation, what it takes to move that thing forward. So you don't want to even lean towards that system. You lean towards God is my source. I'm grateful that I'm working from home, but God is my source. I'm grateful that I'm here with my kids, but God is my source. <clears throat> According to Luke 18, 1, Jesus wants us to commit to remaining persistently faithful to prayer. And that's where I'm going to close with you today. I want you to remain consistently faithful to prayer. I want you to go look at 18, Luke 18. I want you to read it over and over and over. I want you to see with that lady with no hope, how she conducted herself, how she troubled a man who said, I fear no God. I have no regard for humanity. But there's something about persistence and the persistence of this woman that's wearying me. That's wearing me down. I want you to know that that judge in the land can't even compare to the Lord of Lords and the Kings of Kings, El El Yon, the most high God that's already answered your prayers. She had to go back. All we got to do is thank him. She had to keep coming with persistence. All we got to do is be persistent thanking God. And that is the story of the or the parable of Luke 18. I want you to read it and get an understanding in the midst of reality. That you need a prayer life, that you need to be abiding in God, that you need to retrain your senses to disconnect from the world taking care of you and connect to God as my source. God is my peace. God is my direction. 
God is my guidance. And don't get hubristic over here in your industry and think that somehow or another it, 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 it's going to save you. It may, it may not, but don't lean on that. You lean on God is your source. And how do you know that? You visit him every single morning. You open your mouth and you let, you let him know, I'm thanking you, Lord. I'm thanking you, Lord, for longevity on my job. And, somebody, and a natural person will go, you're crazy. What are you talking about? Uh, God don't hand me a job. And then I say thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm thanking him because I have the job. I'm thanking him because I am going back to work. I'm thanking him because my industry will survive. Every industry will. That's why I'm thanking him. I'm not wondering if it is. I'm thanking him because he's already given it to me. Man, were you blessed by the word of God? Were you blessed by the word of God? I want you to open your mouth right there in your living room, and I want you to say, Lord, you are my source. Lord, you are my source. God, you are our source. And I want you to break out in thanksgiving right now with your spouse. Your spouse needs to see you lift your hands and say, exactly. See, I'm man enough to let my wife know I don't have the natural ability to keep us from going through anything in this pandemic. But I do have the spiritual wherewithal to push back against this thing through prayer for my family. So please don't put all your confidence in me and what I'm saying and how slick I'm saying it about things are going to turn around. You need to hear prayer coming off my mouth. That wife needs to hear prayer coming off your mouth. That husband needs to hear prayer coming off your mouth. Your children need to hear prayer coming off your mouth. Your children need to go back to school and say, well, I'll tell you what, I hung out with my parents a, 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 man, a long time every single day and one thing I learned about them they are people of prayer. How you know that, little fella? Well, hey, every single morning, my dad, you know, usually he's at work or I'm gone when he wakes up. But now we're in the house together. My dad, my parents would round us up and we would pray and we'd push back. And my dad, my virtual, my virtual school would go so good because my parents are people of prayer. Amen. Listen, if you want to be born again, we want to help you get born again. We got people right there on the interactive church there with you.